Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Life with Zach. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today, I wanted to introduce something that may be kind of unusual or unknown to a lot of people, unless you live in an area like I do, um, and that is the Low Water Bridge, uh, which is sometimes also called the Submersible Bridge, submersible bridge um, or Submarine Bridge, uh, that this is technically not um, a fully submersible bridge. Um, now, the Low Water Bridge um, is kind of unique to um, more rural and, um, I guess, more agriculture and um, areas that don't have a lot of high levels of development. And it's especially unique to areas that need some type of road crossing to access them, uh, but which are not uh, high traffic areas, that there's not a lot of volume of traffic that may be crossing them um, that wouldn't warrant the construction of a more expensive or a more damaging type of bridge um, that you see in some other areas. Uh, now, these low water bridges here in my community of Shenandoah County, Virginia, um, all went up in the 1930s when the state of Virginia um, took over management of the road systems from the counties. And what happened was, in many places, there were still fords uh, that people had to cross water in order to access their homes or in some places, um, even small communities. Um, and, you know, a ford is a place where you're basically crossing over water uh, that is running all the time. Okay. And what the Commonwealth did uh, with some encouragement from local leaders who brought in this design from other places was installed a series of low water bridges that were designed to provide dry access um, to these areas, except for in times of flooding, when the when water um, was up, okay? So because they knew that these bridges uh, were designed uh, to be underwater um, when the time came, heavy rainfalls or whatever, they were actually designed to be flooded so that the the floodwaters themselves would not damage the bridge. Um, you can see that in the design, okay? So number one, these bridges are low. Um, you don't get the high embankments and things like that that you get with a lot of other bridges. So you can see that really it doesn't sometimes take very much water uh, to cover them. Um, these are concrete. Um, there's no metal railing or anything like that that can be um, get caught, stuff caught in it or damaged by a flood. Uh, basically, it's just a big piece of concrete. Um, also, in some of the designs of the abutments of the bridge and things, you can see that they're pointed um, towards the way that the river is flowing from. So when the water comes down, it actually just kind of goes around them. Uh, it flows around them. And when it's underwater and stuff in the high volumes that you get, uh, basically that water is just able to kind of flow over it. Also, you'll see in the little uh, curbs along the side um, that there's holes there for drainage. So if water comes up and gets on the bridge, um, as the river goes down, it can easily drain back off of there. Um, but there's nothing really fancy about this. There's no real curb and gutter or drainage system or anything like that, except for these really simple pieces that go with this bridge. Now, there's really two types of low water bridges. Um, the first is what's called um, sometimes a vented ford. Now, a vented ford is one, basically, it's just a big culvert with a concrete um, roadbed over top of it. Uh, now, these are designed in areas that are primarily dry or there's really low water flow. So like a very small stream or something like that that might go through a culvert. Now, of course, it can be a really big culvert or a smaller culvert, um, but they're not designed to have to hold water um, or larger volumes of water on a normal basis. And then there's your actual low water bridge, which that's what you're seeing in the pictures that are kind of cycling through here. Um, a low water bridge is designed to actually have water flowing under it all the time. And you can see that the openings are much larger. Um, this one is across the Shenandoah River, the North Fork um, at Lupton Road, east of Woodstock. And, you know, it's a river crossing. So there's a lot of flow that goes under this all the time. 
Um, and this will actually be navigable all the time, except for when there's floodwaters. Um, so when they designed these bridges, there's also a second piece that came with this. Uh, the Commonwealth knew that the river, um, streams, and other places flooded on a regular basis. Um, so what they did was they installed along these submersible bridges, these low water bridges, a series of much higher swinging walking bridges, okay? And these swinging walking bridges were basically designed to be above the floodwaters um, so people could walk over the, the river or whatever body of water they needed to cross uh, in the event of a flood and they had to get out or get in. Um, but really they're nothing but a really high walking trail. Um, they're sometimes pretty cool to go across and they're pretty cool to look at. Um, but they're, they're just designed so that the few people who live on one side of a low water bridge uh, might be able to walk across them. They're not really good for access, uh, but it basically prevented people from being completely trapped on the other side. Um, some of these still exist in a few places, um, but many of them have been removed. Um, but the low water bridges are still prevalent in not only Shenandoah County, but the Shenandoah Valley, um, across the river, across the, the uh, several streams and creeks. And a lot of these are also seen privately as um, the way to access houses that may be on one side of a creek or a stream or body of water from um, the road that passes by. And, you know, for a private homeowner, just like for the state, it's a much cheaper alternative than building um, a big bridge that might have, that's going to have to go up uh, really high to avoid the flood. Uh, now, because these bridges do get water across them, uh, there are some safety issues that come with them. Um, the first one of these is their small one lane bridges. Okay, so that has really nothing to do with the water, but it has to do with the fact that these aren't highly traveled roads. So they're one lane. You really have to be careful when crossing them because if someone's coming the other way, there is not room to pass, okay? Also because they're one lane, they can't accommodate wide vehicles. There's no rail or anything like that. So you have to make sure you don't get off to the side. Some of them don't even have that um, curb like there's on the one here in these pictures. Okay, so it can be really easy to get off of them um, and go into the water. I've seen that happen a lot. Um, it can also be really easy when you come on or go off of the bridge um, to get messed up and end up in a bad situation, okay? Because some of them, it's really sharp turns to get on. There's kind of a weird culvert. There's a way to have to turn, whatever. Uh, so you need to be careful when you're going on and off these bridges. Also, many of these, because of the low traffic volume and their age, have a pretty strict weight limit, sometimes down to only like 10 tons. So big vehicles certainly do not need to be going across these bridges and you need to watch your weight limit of what you're trying to pull across them because it can be dangerous. Now, when the bridges are flooded, you really don't want to cross them at all um, because really the flow of the water, even from a small stream, even from only a little bit of water um, that's crossing them can be enough to push even a pretty heavy vehicle off of the bridge, all right? So even just a couple inches of water can push a car off the bridge. And because there's no railing, there's no anything to catch you, you're just going right into those floodwaters. So if there's any water at all flowing across these bridges, do not drive across them. And I mean, all of them have signage and stuff that say that, uh, but sometimes that can be obscured for whatever reason, sometimes even by flood water. So just please use some common sense and don't try to cross these because people get hurt and people die from trying to cross these bridges. Um, I've always thought that these bridges are really cool. Just the design, the fact that they're actually made to be underwater. Okay, they're made um, to provide access without really um, building a huge bridge that really changes the landscape. And they also really follow the historic route of a road, okay? Historically, you wouldn't have had a big bridge that, you know, would cross something, you would have had that ford. And this still kind of provides that kind of rustic 
um, almost historic atmosphere as you're kind of crossing them. Um, so I, I just kind of always been fascinated by how they built, they've been built and things like that um, and what they're used for. But again, they can be dangerous, but they really are an exciting thing to look at. Um, they can provide some really cool backdrops and stuff for photographs. They really can be part of the scenery. Um, a lot of them have some type of river access at them. Uh, people use them to get in the river to go tubing, to go fishing. Um, some of them have places that are designed for that. Some of them don't, so you have to kind of watch out for that. Um, some of them have places you can even get in the river and swim. Um, but again, that's kind of the story of these low water bridges that are across Shender County. They're kind of a unique uh, part of our history. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found value in this and some of the other videos, definitely I uh, appreciate a like, uh, a comment with any kind of feedback or anything you have. And if you really liked them and if you want to take a minute, hit subscribe. There's going to be a lot of other videos coming out about things in the Shenandoah Valley um, as I travel, um, local history stuff, reviews of things, everything from cars to my lawnmower to new pieces of technology to new gadgets to new uh, appliances that I pick up. So hope you enjoyed. Again, hit like or subscribe and look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day.